Hi everyone, I'm Tony Gilbert from the International Seakeeper Society. I'm the program director and I'll be telling you a little bit uh, about our organization and what we do. Seakeeper's mission is to facilitate marine research, conservation efforts, and education by linking the yachting community with the science community. Uh, and the way we do this is by asking anyone with a either a yacht uh, for some of the longer trips or any kind of boat really, um, if they'd be willing to donate time and resources toward the expedition. Um, and that is because many times it is cost prohibitive for uh, these expeditions to even get off the ground due to the high cost of chartering a vessel. So again, um, you know, simply asking that uh, time and resources be donated. Uh, in terms of other costs, uh, that's really up to the owner of the vessel. Um, but many times the scientists will have some budget to cover uh, some hard expenses like fuel and provisions. Um, but yeah, that is what we do and, and, uh, and how we do it. Um, the research beneficiaries, uh, those scientists that I just spoke about, um, these are just a handful of uh, examples. We have uh, NSU, that's Nova Southeastern University, um, Arizona State University, So Far Ocean is a company that makes a drifter buoy that actually uh, it monitors oceanic conditions. So there's a whole grid of those all over floating around and we've actually put more than a few out uh, through our Discovery Yacht program. Um, and you know, there's more universities here. So as you can see, uh, th as the word spread, um, more and more scientists started knocking on our door and uh, seeing if we can get them out on the water. So the Discovery Yacht program is comprised of scientist-led expeditions, citizen science, educational outreach events, and community engagement. Seakeepers collaborates with numerous organizations, academic institutions, and government agencies in order to accomplish its Discovery Yacht missions. So let's see a few of those. Um, Scientist-led expeditions. Here is actually a whale research and tagging uh, expedition that I was a part of in July of 2019. And as you can see from that picture that just slid by, um, it's really interesting. What they do is actually with a pole, they go ahead and attach these uh, tags that are actually called biologgers. And it's actually a camera that's stuck onto the whale with suction cups. And that way you can get a uh, whale's eye view of life underwater for them. And it also records a lot of other things like temperature, depth, uh, and movement. Here we have a shark tagging uh, expedition that took place in May of 2018 aboard the Discovery Yacht uh, Mercado, which you saw in the background there. And here we are on their tender. Uh, and that is a tiger shark under the water. We had just tagged it. You can kind of sort of see it coming off of the dorsal fin there. Um, that was a very uh, successful trip. I believe there was 30 sharks tagged in total over a course of about six days. And um, yeah, Beneath the Waves is a, uh, a research, a shark research organization that we've collaborated with uh, many times. Here we have a actually a 42 foot power cat that um, it has four scientists and myself and there's one of the scientists in scuba gear and here we were actually taking coral samples uh, out in the dry tortugas about 70 miles west of Key West and working our way up through the entire Florida reef tract uh, and this was with the purpose of seeing which coral uh, communities and species are adapting to changing conditions such as warmer temperatures and uh, acidification. And, you know, hopefully if you can learn which corals are actually resilient to these types of conditions, then you can essentially replant those same species and hopefully bring back some of the coral reefs and the abundance of the coral reefs that we once had, which unfortunately they're now dying off. And so if you go diving in some of these sites, it doesn't really look like what it used to 40 years ago. And unfortunately in 40 more years, they may be completely gone. So uh, again, a very important um, expedition and it wasn't even on a super yacht. So this goes to show that uh, boats of all sizes 
can uh, really make a difference. Citizen science is another facet of our Discovery Yacht program. Um, and so the first of three initiatives I'm going to tell you about is the SARA initiative. That's an acronym that stands for Sample, Aggregate, Return, Analyze, Help. And that's in partnership with Florida International University. And so what we do here is be, it's called citizen science because the citizens are conducting the science, whereas and or what you might call civilians, um, as opposed to actual scientists. Um, and so it's usually the crew of the boat or people that own their own small recreational craft. Um, and they will actually, you know, on their journey on, on whatever legs of uh, maybe between charters or if they're, you know, crossing an ocean, they will drag a net, which we call a serenet, um, and collect plastic samples. And now these plastic samples then get sent back to us and we send them to the lab to be analyzed to see what uh, types of plastics are being found out there and in, in what quantities and where. So if we can kind of nail down those three variables, we can try to see where the problem is and how we can try to come up with maybe some policy initiatives to, uh, to correct it. The spotter deployments are, that, that's pretty simple. As you can see here, the spotter buoy, it's uh, actually uh, solar powered. Uh, that's what that, those black squares are on top. And so they can operate indefinitely. So you're not just you know putting something out there in the ocean that will have a shelf life. Um, these are designed to work until you retrieve them again. Um, and they are very important in sort of acting as our eyes and ears out on the water, uh, monitoring ocean conditions like uh, waves, uh, sea state, and also other things like temperature, salinity, pH, uh, you know, those kinds of things that you want to be monitoring and seeing how the, the ocean is doing. Um, and uh, so the more you have out there, the, 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 the clearer of a picture you're going to have of global weather as well. So we can start to see what conditions might be leading to uh, busier hurricane seasons and things like that. So, um, and we actually just deployed 38 of these uh, from a super yacht called Vibrant Curiosity uh, when they were transiting from the Bahamas over to the Mediterranean. Our third citizen science initiative, uh, which is in partnership with the uh, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, you know them better as NOAA. Um, is the Expendable Bathythermograph, or XBT. And this is simply a cylindrical probe that gets shot into the water as you're moving. Uh, you do it every four hours. And as it lowers into the down the water column, it gives uh, temperature readings. And, and again, you know, um, ocean temperature is a huge, not only uh, indicator of future weather events, but um, it just kind of gives you a snapshot of uh, the health of the ocean um, because it, it's, you know, temperature is, is very dependent on a lot of things. But again, like I said before, it can also be an indicator of things to come. Here we have a map of, well, uh, this isn't everything, but it's a lot. And it's basically what you're seeing are, are the different what we call discovery yachts. All the, these are all the names of all the boats that have helped us out in either citizen science uh, initiatives or uh, uh, with scientist-led expeditions where science teams have been aboard for expeditions. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty vast in terms of the, the, the parts of the world that we've been able to, to reach uh, all through recreational and, and privately owned yachts. So that's pretty great. Educational outreach is a, another facet of Sea Keepers, um, and we do floating classrooms, lesson plans, and even online presentations via Zoom. Uh, floating classroom is essentially just uh, giving them a hands-on approach uh, to teaching, you know, school children about uh, local ecology or marine conservation. Uh, lesson plans can be given to the teachers uh, if they want to do something outside of the normal curriculum. Uh, then that's always fun. And um, as, as far as online presentations, as I said, those are done via Zoom. Um, and that's where we have actual scientists and experts uh, talk to the kids 
uh, live via Zoom. And what's great about this is that you can have a really far reach. Uh, and if anything's come out of um, you know the last year and the pandemic, um, this was actually a good thing. It, it taught us uh, how valuable uh, Zoom can be. Finally, we have community engagement as another facet of Seakeepers. Um, and this uh, has to do with any kind of beach cleanups, um, island cleanups, and even underwater dive cleanups. And so uh, in the couple years where we've really been kind of you know, starting up this program, uh, we've had 1,267 volunteers pick up over 5,000 pounds of trash. Uh, and that number is still rising. Um, and as much as we love having people come out and uh, you know show their support for their community, um, it is kind of sad that this is the amount of trash that we're finding out there. But you know, if we don't pick it up and kind of educate the community on how best to keep their their environment clean, then it'll just end up uh, inside the stomachs of the wildlife and and that's really a huge kind of blight on the uh, the local wildlife you can find us online on pretty much any um, platform such as not only our website which as you can see has had about twenty five thousand views um but uh YouTube, we've got 11,000 views. Instagram, we have now 5,000 followers, um, 4.7 thousand followers on Facebook, and 1,000 um, on Twitter. And so essentially, we use these not only to kind of show what Seakeepers is doing and what we've accomplished, but again, this really showcases the work that the scientists are doing and other conservationists, but also it's really showcasing the boats themselves as we always make it a point to include, you know, the boat and maybe some of the crew, uh, the owner if they want to be named. But we always want to showcase who is getting us out there on the water and, and helping the science get done. So yeah, calling all vessels. This is our... our recruitment time. This is uh, where we ask you, uh, the people in the yachting industry and in the yachting community to just, uh, you know, reach out and see if you have maybe any clients or friends or anyone that has a vessel. And it can be a vessel of any size, really. It doesn't have to be a yacht, per se. And, um, you know, they can really do a lot of good. And it's also a, an incredible experience. It's a really fun adventure. Um, I, I love what I do. It's because I get to go out on all these expeditions. And um, yeah, and your, your, your clients and, and all your other contacts are going to love it too. I'd also like to take this time to thank uh, GMT, Global Marine Travel. I don't know if any of you have worked with them in the past, but uh, they're really great. And they essentially uh, are the ones responsible for getting me uh, all around the world and meeting up with the, the many different boats and yachts that uh, I've had these expeditions on. Um, and uh, so, you know, just a, a special thanks to them for also getting me here. And thank you for joining us. Um, hope you learned a little bit more about Sea Keepers. And, uh, you know, if you saw this in person, then thanks for being part of that crowd. And if you're seeing this online, all the same. And, uh, yeah, you can always just contact uh, me at Tony at seakeepers.org. Um, and, uh, yeah, please check out our website and see all the things we've helped accomplish. Thank you.